Hello everybody, welcome to Shark Gardening Tips Part 1. Um, we're talking about uh, soil here for uh, planting vegetables and before we plant vegetables we should know what's in the soil and soil has basically three properties. It has a physical property, what we can see, sand, silt, clay, organic matter, some rocks in it and some weeds and it has a chemical property which are uh, the minerals, the nutrients, the soil pH, the cation exchange and then it has a biological properties and those are the microorganisms. Basically the microorganisms are the most important part in, uh, in the soil properties because they determine the, uh, the chemical and the physical aspect of a soil. And I just want to show you quick how you can determine uh, the soil textures, that means the amount of sand, silt and clay that we have in the, in the soil. And then by just looking at it and digging in it, it's, it's easy to say if it has a good structure, if it uh, is, is uh, well aggregated so that water can stay in the soil and holds it, and the same with the nutrients. And to show you how it's done to do it for a homeowner to see um, the amount of sand, silt and clay in the soil, it's very simple. All we need is a mason jar, doesn't matter about the size, we need a lid, we need biodegradable dishwater powder and a shovel and we need some water as well. So what we do, we uh, get rid of the organic matter and then uh, fill the mason jar roughly with about a third of soil, trying to take out the uh, rocks and all that stuff because we have to shake it for a uh, 10 to 15 minutes and if we have big rocks in there we may have the chance that we're gonna break um, the, the glass. So that's a good third of soil in here from the garden bed and then uh, put about between three and five tablespoons of uh, dishwasher powder in it. We put the dishwasher powder in it because the microorganisms, they build glues and the fungal strands in there to break up the aggregates and the micro and macro aggregates so that uh, we can determine uh, the amount that's in there. And then adding the jar with about three quarter of water. Perfect. And then we'll shake that for about 10 to 15 minutes just to break everything apart and that sand and silt and the clay can uh, settle out. And usually it's the sand that settles out within the first um, 30 seconds. So, and then uh, takes up to 30 minutes for the silt to uh, settle out. And clay can take up to one day. So we keep shaking it. And basically I've done it a, a day in advance and we have a sample over here where uh, everything settled out. And um, as we can see, that's where the sand the, the coarse sand, the finer sand, the smaller sand, and then the silt settled out. And we have a very tiny, tiny hairline of clay. And the reason is why we have so little clay in here is um, because that's a soil that, uh, that, that's, that was brought in on site and it's a uh, compost, good compost with organic matter in it, and was mixed with sand and used as a, and sold as a gardening blend. So and that's why we have very little clay in it. It's usually for soil texture, it would be an ideal to have uh, one third of sand, one third of silt and one third of clay. That would give us a, a nice clay loam to plant. And clay is important because for the cation exchange, for nutrient exchange in the soil. And since we have very little soil in that so in, in uh, very little clay in that soil, I recommend to uh, add a lot of good organic matter, like a good rich compost to it. And um, once we add to that soil, I would say an inch to two inch of good compost, work it in a little bit in the surface, and then you're basically ready to uh, start planting your vegetable and uh, enjoy the harvest for the season. Welcome to Shaw Gardening Tips, part two. Now that it's almost summer, it's a great time to plant pole beans. These are scarlet runner beans. Beans are a great crop to start for beginners because they grow easily and they grow quickly and you can produce a lot of food. Once you have your soil ready, 
you plant the beans about one inch deep. Generally, a good rule of thumb is you wanna plant them about double the depth of the seed. Put the bean in, cover it up with soil, and gently pat it down. So when your beans start growing, they're going to want to climb up something. And pole beans can grow quite tall, often over six feet tall. So they're gonna need something to climb up and to support them. I like to use bean teepees. This one is made out of bamboo, but you can also use any kind of wood you have lying around. You could also use a fence or a garden trellis. So now that we have our beans planted, let's go plant some kale. Kale is a great plant because it's really easy to grow and you can either grow it in the garden or in pots if you don't have much space. Kale is also really easy to plant. Really all you do is just sprinkle some kale seeds onto the soil. Here we've already planted some kale seeds a few weeks ago that are coming up here and kale is also great for succession planting meaning that you can grow a few plants one day and then wait a few weeks and plant a few more in a few weeks and that you'll have a continuous crop of kale going on. So once you've sprinkled your seeds, you want to cover them with a tiny bit of soil. And how I do this is just by gently scrunching up the dirt over the seeds. So you mix it up a bit and then gently pat it down again. You can also plant kale in rows. Some people like their gardens to look a bit more tidy, or you can fill a whole small bed with it, or you can divide your garden into square foot plots and plant intensively in each plot. Once you've planted your seeds, you'll want to make sure they have lots of water. Give your seeds a good drink so that they can spread. You'll want to make sure that the soil your seeds are planted in doesn't dry out. And a good way to test that is to stick your finger in the soil. And if it's still dry an inch or two down, definitely give it water. But if it's moist down there, you don't need to water it. So in a few weeks, you'll have some beautiful kale to put in your salad. Happy gardening. Welcome to Shaw TV's Gardening Tips, part three. Today we're gonna to talk about bees. Encouraging bees into your garden is one of the best things you can do for your plants. Bees increase pollination and can increase the amount of vegetables and fruits your plants produce. One way to attract bees to your garden is to make sure there's lots to eat at all times. And bees eat pollen and nectar from flowers, so it's important to have lots of flowers flowering at all times in your garden. Today we're gonna to plant some wildflower seeds. This is just a mix of native flowering plants from the area. Um, you can pick them up from garden stores or online. Um, they're a great blend because they have flowers that bloom continuously all throughout the season. And that's really important because bees like to eat all throughout the season as well. Wildflower seeds can be planted all throughout the summer and spring and fall. Um, if you plant them in the fall, they'll overwinter and come up in the spring for you. Um, they're one of the easiest things to plant. All you have to do is sprinkle them all in the soil, scratch them in, and make sure they're well watered until they sprout. Now that you've planted wildflower seeds from your garden, let's find out how you can make a mason bee house to encourage bees to actually nest in your garden. Mason bees are a great type of bee to attract to your garden because they're active in early spring when many fruit trees are flowering. They're also really easy to welcome into your garden by providing nest sites for them. For example, they love nesting in hollow bamboo tubes. I think it's because they're very structural and strong and they provide a very safe nesting place for them. Essentially, a mason bee house can be just a bundle of hollow stems and tubes. Here we've cut up bamboo that is hollow in the middle and it's important that you cut the stems so that one side is open, there's an open hole on one end, but the other end is closed with the node, that kind of wall in the middle of the bamboo. So once you've cut up your bamboo stems, you want a nice variety of diameters of holes because bees come in different sizes, so they like different sized homes. You bundle them up and tie them with a piece of string. You can also use elastic bands or shove all the tubes into a can or a juice container or something else that will keep them bundled together for the season. So you probably want to get this nice and tight so that the stems don't fall out. 
But once you've bundled up your stems, you can hang them on a garden shed, on a fence post, on the side of your house, anywhere that is a little bit sheltered from the rain and the wind. And you can hang it up in early spring or any time of year, really. And any bees that are active at during that time will find your stems, lay their eggs in there, and the babies will develop over the season and emerge the following spring and summer. So let's hang this one up and we'll see who finds it. Welcome to Shaw TV's Gardening Tips, part four. Today we're gonna to learn how to transplant some starts into your garden. Starts can be a great way to start your garden because the plants are already bigger than they would be if you planted them from seed. Some good starts of different plants to buy are tomatoes, eggplant, peppers, squash, and cucumber. And they're very simple to plant in your garden. All you have to do is dig a hole after you've made sure that your soil has the right nutrients in it for the plant you're planting. So dig a hole, put some water in the hole so it's nice and moist. <clears throat> and take out your plant and as you can probably see this plant has a lot of roots coming out the bottom and that means that it's probably root bound. So let's take a look. It's probably been in this pot for too long. Yeah. So there's lots of roots in there. And what you wanna do if your plant is root bound like this is just break up the roots a bit, just so that the roots can spread out into the soil more easily and not just wrap and wrap around itself again. So once you've moved the roots like that, put it in the hole and move the soil back onto it. And you want the soil to be pretty much exactly the same level as it was in the pot. So right up to that pot soil level. Give it another water. And a lot of plants like tomatoes don't like water on their leaves. It can make them turn yellow or get blight. Let's pat it down and you're good to go. Just make sure that your plant gets lots of water and you might wanna transplant on a cloudy day so that the plant is not shocked or transplant later in the day so it has some time to get settled overnight. Next, we're going to plant a lavender plant. Different herbs and flowers are also great to plant from starts because sometimes the seeds can be difficult to grow in a home garden. And you plant them much the same way that you would plant a tomato start. You dig a hole. Put some water in it. Carefully take the plant out of the pot and this one is even more root bound than the last one but you want to break up those roots so it has some space to grow out and then put it in the hole and again put it to that same soil level <clears throat> pat it down and give it another water it's good to plant your starts on a cloudy day or alternately you can cover them with some remay or some cloth so they don't get shocked. And that's how you plant a tomato and a lavender plant. <laughs>